All this week we've shown you what many vacant and blighted properties around the city look like. But the big question we have here is why do so many stay in that state for so long? Danny Monteverdi has the answers in tonight's installment of Vacant New Orleans and gives us a rare look inside of one of the city's most high profile vacant buildings. The Market Street Power Plant is known for its towering twin stacks that stand out along the New Orleans riverfront. It's also known for the number of times plans to revive it have come and gone, leaving it to slowly crumble. Inside, the rusted bones of the building are accented by colorful graffiti sprayed on over the years by those who dare to enter. This video comes from the Instagram account Abandoned New Orleans, whose owner explores many of the city's vacant buildings. The Market Street Power Plant, which once produced all of the power for the city, has been silent since the 70s when Nopsy, the predecessor to Entergy, shut it down. A possible new owner, made up of several local developers, hopes to revive the building as part of a bigger plan to build a new neighborhood on the uptown side of the convention center. It's not an easy proposition. They're complicated. John Williams is an architect who's worked for some of the biggest developers in town on some of the city's most prominent landmarks, everything from the fairgrounds to the Circle Food Store. Designing the future of the Market Street power plant could be one of his next jobs if the sale goes through. He says the bigger the project, the more issues there are to deal with. Take the power plant, you know, it has multiple levels, it's on the river, the zoning is constantly changing, uh, and you have to, you know, look at doing its own zoning, uh, you know, a planned unit development, or then the financing. How do you finance something like this? It's not, you know, one or two or five million dollars, it's 50 or 100 or 150 million dollars. That financing is another complex issue. It's known in the industry as synthetic equity. That's like the tax credits or a break on, on your property tax. More recently, William says, the COVID-19 pandemic drove up construction costs. You know, if you want plywood, it's several times more than it used to be. He points to one project finally underway as an example of how long something can take. Look how long it took the World Trade Center to not only get the financing, get underway, and then how long it's, take to, it's taken for the construction. Same goes for Charity Hospital, which languished for years before work began to transform it into a mix of homes, retail space, and dorms for Tulane students. Outside of the city's commercial areas, there are pockets of vacant homes. Neighbors in the 7th Ward were glad to see this one finally torn down recently. But they had one question. Where the owner of the property at? I don't know where he lives. And therein lies one problem for the city. When city attorneys want to tackle problem properties, there is a long legal process. One aspect, an extensive title research to identify every person who is an owner or has a legal interest in the property. Get your family members together, because you could at least get a couple of thousand off of it. Dawn Abair has worked with the city for years to get problem properties removed from New Orleans East. She says she understands there's a process in place, but that it couldn't be more bureaucratic. You know, in other communities, St. Bernard Parish, St. Tammany Parish, we don't see the type of blight and high grass and, you know, overgrown lots. We don't see that in other parishes. We are the biggest city in this state, I believe. So why, what is it? You know, why isn't it not being handled when we could see it, uh, other areas, other parishes being cleaned up? One of the more prominent vacant buildings in New Orleans East is known as the Caveman Reader Hotel because of the graffiti that was sprayed across its facade years ago. We're looking at colors now. We're going to have to paint the caveman, and it won't be the caveman anymore. We'll have to call it something else. A former Holiday Inn, it's finally being converted into new housing. But just across Chef Highway from that work is this eyesore, a partially demolished apartment complex full of high grass and rotting wood. Hebert says she's glad to see some progress, but she and others hope there will be a greater push to wipe out blight on their streets as well. We are uh, wanting to have a better quality of life, but again, we cannot do it without the city's help, and it, it needs to happen. I don't know when it's going to happen, but it needs to happen. Danny Monteverdi, Eyewitness News. We're all interested in seeing the progress on these projects. We'll keep an eye on the projects we've covered in this series and we'll keep you updated if there's any progress made.